Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again. How you doing? I'm Jackson Small, you know, host of the Animation Station, the channel that is now over 800 subscribers. And, yep, title doesn't lie, intro doesn't lie. It's time for DC Lie, Volume 2. Because we still have a lot of these animated DC movies to get through, and I already did. If you want to know all the details, check out the description of the separate upload with just the intro. Very proud of that intro, by the way. Love that intro. So, yeah. Um, last time, I believe we started it off with a Batman movie. Batman vs. Dracula, to be more specific. And this time, we're starting it off with a Superman movie. How fitting. So, let's not waste any more time and dive into what... To my... Recollection, excuse me, is the final movie of this self-contained one-off story era of these DC animated movies known as Superman Unbound. I didn't really know what to expect going into this one, but um, let me just say I'm glad I watched it. Th this is a really good Superman movie, and I'm going to tell you why. So, I have a pretty long review for this one, not nearly as long as the one I have for Flashpoint, spoiler alert, but... It's still a pretty detailed written review. I have a lot to say. So you guys can just sit back, relax, and enjoy. And since I no longer have audio problems, it's full live action. None of that weird screen recorder crap. So without further ado, let's kick this off. Here's my written review for Superman Unbound. I hope you guys enjoy. Whoa, we're already off to a positive start for DC Live Volume 2. This is a pretty good ending for the self-contained era of the DCAU series overall, and a really good Superman movie. Based on the Superman Brainiac comics by the legendary Jeff Johns, which many people herald as one of the best Superman writers of all time, Unbound tells the story of how Superman, voiced this time by Matt Bomer, and his cousin Supergirl, voiced by Winx Club, Winx Club alumni Molly Quinn, Battle against the interdimensional evil known as Brainiac, voiced by Denethor of Lord of the Rings himself, John Noble, who took Kara's home planet Kandor for his own personal collection many decades beforehand and is now setting his sights on the Earth. The biggest thing I can praise about this movie right off the bat is definitely its exciting action scenes and the excellent writing. The fights in this scene... The fight scenes in this movie are absolutely fantastic, with a really big emphasis on both choreography and PG-13 boundary-pushing brutality. Seriously, this movie's battles are violent as heck, and it's awesome despite the rating. Like, don't let that PG-13 scare you. This isn't like a Blumhouse PG-13 where they can barely show anything. No, this is an animated DC PG-13. And in here, they're not afraid to show you some blood and some very violent scenes. Especially Superman fighting against this army of Brainiac robots. He rips them apart. It is visceral. It is very on screen. And, oh, and the ultimate death of our main villain. Mmm, it is as brutal and satisfying as you want it to be. In other words, it's awesome. Plain and simple. Then there's the superb writing from both Johns himself, as well as Bob Goodman and Gary Frank, that does a great job bringing the characters to life from the comics while remaining true to that source material, which nowadays seems like a Herculean task for most comic book movies. <coughs> Flash. <coughs> Sorry, I had to get that out there. Then there's the voice acting, which is genuinely great here, especially Bomer, who's surprisingly a really good Superman, and Quinn, who sounds fantastic as Supergirl, like... Molly Quinn is great as Supergirl, and I really hope this isn't the only time that she gets to voice this character, because she's really freaking good at it. And of course, Noble as Brainiac is great too, really embodying the cold-hearted, calculating personality of this iconic DC villain. And of course, there's all the rest of the positives of the movie too. Sword, uh, solid storytelling, excellent characters, brisk runtime, great pacing, and some pretty good rewatchability. That being said, though, I wouldn't quite call this a total knockout, as there are a few issues that do need to be pointed out, but before we get into the negatives, let's start with my biggest mixed aspect of the film for me, and that is specifically its animation. Don't get me wrong, it is very well done, fluid, and 2D animation, and it's by no means bad, but my issue lies in the very strange art style and color palette they chose for this movie. 
It's very different from the previous animated Superman films and takes some time getting used to. And while some characters like Lois and Supergirl look excellent, pretty much one-for-one models like their original DCAU series counterparts, like television series counterparts is what I'm talking about here. Others like Superman and Brainiac look a bit off-model. It's the elongated faces. It just, it looks weird to me. I don't, it might just be me having that problem, but it does take some getting used to. And while it starts off decently colorful in the beginning, somewhere around the middle, it sadly becomes a bit dark and dreary, which can lead to it feeling a bit empty visually. This movie does have its moments where the visuals aren't really all that impressive. Not the stuff going on screen. No, the stuff going on screen is still really good. But I mean, like, visually speaking, it doesn't really have much personality, and it kind of turns into that same dark and dreary landscape color palette that we're so used to seeing by now. It's more so a nitpick rather than a negative, so it's just a little bit off-putting to me, so I felt it was necessary to point it out. As for the actual negatives of the movie, there are still a few. Uh, Third act is a bit rushed, Superman and Supergirl feel like they're constantly fighting for screen time, plot can be a bit formulaic and flimsy, and as great as the storytelling is in this movie, it's also pretty basic DC. Like, it's what you'd expect from DC. And it doesn't feel quite as grandiose as some of the past animated Superman films did. I don't know if that's, again, probably just a me thing, because I'm not the biggest Superman fan out there, but it's just something I noticed while I was watching this movie, along with the recollection of having watched all those other Superman animated movies from last DC Live. So, just something I found a bit strange. Overall, though, while it is definitely flawed, I still really liked this one. Sure, it's a bit basic and far from the best Superman film out there. I still stand by that title belonging to All-Star Superman. Seriously, if you haven't watched All-Star Superman yet, you need to see it. It is an incredible movie that you need to see. But considering that Superman 4 and the abysmal Superman vs. the Elite both existed years prior, and not to mention this came out the same year as the awful trash pile that was Man of Steel... Uh, you can definitely do a lot worse. Action-packed, brutal, well-voice acted, and lots of fun, Superman Unbound delivers another pretty good outing for the fan-favorite superhero that really packs a punch. Final Verdict is a rock-solid 7 out of 10. A pretty good time that I do recommend giving a watch, especially if you are a fan of The Man of Steel. So, yeah, pretty much a short, sweet, to the point review for a short, sweet, to the point movie. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because this is only the beginning of our very, very long DC Live Volume 2 journey. And next up, oh boy, we, we have a big fan favorite that I'm pretty sure a lot of you were bummed was not in the previous DC Live. But it's finally getting its spotlight. I have finally seen it and I'm super, super excited to talk to you guys about it. I'll see you guys next time. For the underrated masterpiece that is Justice League The Flashpoint Paradox.